2022 has been a god-awful year for video games. It has been terrible. Almost every major release this year has been a joke. Joke after joke after joke after joke. So, I want to uh, revisit exactly what has come out this year and go over what is still yet to come for the remainder of the year. Because my question is, because the year's been so bad with releases, more so than the standard, more so than usual, I want to know if the second half of the year could potentially be saved. So let's see what we have. Back in January, these are the games, the list of games that, uh, well, were scheduled for release. Most of these did see a release, but at least one of them didn't, and that, that's the Uncharted uh, Legacy of Thieves collection, which was released on PS5, but has still yet to come to PC, despite the fact that when the Legacy of Thieves collection was first announced, Sony had actually put in the trailer at the very end, you know, actually, I think it was at the very beginning, or maybe somewhere partway through, that uh, the Legacy of Thieves collection was also coming to PC via Steam, and that still hasn't been released just yet. Most popular release uh, from that month was God of War on PC. You know, that's an old game from, what, four years ago? And that's the best that we had back in January, which isn't saying much of anything. So, January was shit. Then we have February. Scroll down here. These are the list of games that arrived in February. Now, most of these are a joke. I guess you could say there were four notable releases. Uh, the first was Dying Light 2, Stay Human, uh, which Many have said that uh, Dying Light 2 is actually worse than the first game. Um, I didn't like Dying Light 1, so I skipped 2. Definitely is not a franchise that's for me. And so I didn't cover that on the channel. Uh, Sifu came out on the 8th, and I did cover Sifu. Actually, that's the only uh, indie game that I've covered on the channel, probably in the history of my channel. But yeah, Sifu was... I thought a good game that was marred by a lot of terrible design choices. And unfortunately, more than half of the game's audience actually dropped it before finishing the uh, the second mission. Which is sad because the game only had five levels to begin with. Yeah, that just goes to show how, uh, how much of a failure that game was. Then we have uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which is one of the only good games that has been released this year that's not... An older game being re-released to like a separate you know platform such as PC but this is a new game that came out this year and it's a sequel to 2017's Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Forbidden West I did cover on the channel um, I did play that game initially on PlayStation 4 the PlayStation 4 version and while I thought the game was good I also mentioned in my retrospective that the game uh, was actually worse than the first Horizon. They made some design choices that didn't really make any sense, and they removed some things that didn't really make any sense, and they altered some things that didn't really make any sense either. So, yeah, Forbidden West I thought was good, but not great. Then we have Elden Ring, which was the last major uh, released from February. Uh, Elden Ring is probably the most popular game that's been released this year. Uh, certainly one of the more uh, successful games that's been released this year, and it's pretty much been carrying uh, the gaming industry pretty much the entirety of this year. And uh, Elden Ring, what's new or different about Elden Ring is the fact that it's brought in a long uh, sea of casual casuals, you know, casual gamers, uh, who have never played any of the uh, Souls games before. And uh, that's primarily due to the uh, the hype train and 
Anyone who follows this channel knows that I don't like hype trains. And anyone else who follows this channel also knows that I really despise the Souls games. And especially the Souls, uh, the Souls-like community, the From Software community. You know, that fan base. Don't like it at all. Originally, I was going to skip Elden Ring, but uh, I actually decided to let the choice be up to uh, the audience on the channel. So I did a poll on the community tab earlier this year, and the majority voted that they wanted to see me uh, cover Elden Ring, and so I covered it. It's one of the worst pieces of shit that I've played in recent memory. Basically, Elden Ring, it's accurate to say that the game is just Dark Souls 4, and uh, many have said the same thing. It's just Dark Souls 4 with the same old outdated ass engine. Nothing special. Yep, not uh, very good for the first uh, for the first two months of the year. And then we have uh, March. So there was a long slew of games that released in March. Most of these obviously are a joke, like a, a musical story or Beholder 3, or Triangle Strategy, but there were also a few notable releases similar to February. We had Shadow Warrior 3, which turned out to be an astounding disappointment due to the amount of content that was removed from Shadow Warrior 2, and I did cover Shadow Warrior 3 on the channel. Uh, we had Babylon's Fall, which had initially, when the game was announced a few years ago, it had a lot of potential, but Square Enix, being Square Enix, decided to turn the game into a live service game. And I actually had downloaded the demo for Babylon's Fall earlier this year. And it was so bad that I couldn't even make it past the first 10 minutes. The initial first 10 minutes, I couldn't even fucking be bothered with it. And that's a shame because when Babylon's Fall was announced, which I believe was back in 2018, which is when I started doing uh, voice narration on the channel... I had actually made a video about Babylon's Fall when it initially was first announced, and I had planned on covering the game until, fast forward a few years, that I learned that Square Enix had turned the game into a live service title, and uh, one that has one of the worst graphical presentations that I've ever seen. I decided that uh, I was not going to invest or cover Babylon's Fall in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, that's one of the worst games that's come out this year. Then we have uh, Gran Turismo 7. Uh, I am not a racing game person, but I was forced to buy a PS5 bundle in order to get the PS5, and one of the games in that bundle was Gran Turismo 7. I've played a few minutes of it, and it is boring as hell, like the vast majority of racing games in general. But what's even worse is that, you know, when you actually want to drive one of the more expensive vehicles in the game, the game wants you to actually spend uh, real money on uh, microtransactions so you can, you know, afford to purchase the better cars in the game. And if you're not willing to do that because you have a brain, there's not much of any enjoyment to be had with Gran Turismo 7. So unfortunately, that's another piece of shit that came out earlier this year. And if I scroll down here. There was the re-release of Grand Theft Auto 5, I believe, on PS5 and Xbox Series X. That game is so old at this point that it's not even really worth mentioning anymore. Uh, then we have WWE 2K22. March was so fucking bad. It was so terrible that I decided to actually invest in uh, 2K22, and I actually enjoyed my time with it. I've played some of the WWE games in the past, and I was thinking of covering 2K22, but... I typically never talk about sports-related games, so that's why I kind of, you know, haven't made a video uh, about 2K22. But yeah, I did enjoy what I played of it. And there's a game uh, that came out in March that's actually missing on that list, and that's uh, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Which initially, I was not going to uh, buy this game, but I actually did end up... Uh, purchasing the game for a steep discount on the Epic Games Store on PC. Uh, the game was never released to Steam for whatever random reason, similar to the Kingdom Hearts games. Just judging off of really the only thing I've played thus far of Stranger of Paradise, which is the, uh, the free demo that came out on, uh, I believe, all platforms at this point. I played the demo on uh, PlayStation 4. I couldn't make it past the first 20 minutes. It is literally that bad. Perhaps I'll 
cover the game, but I don't, I don't even know if I have the tolerance to get through it. So I have to see about that one. Oh, okay. So yeah, it is actually listed here. There, there was, yeah, it's right here. There's a longer list of games that came out in March, but yeah, most of these are just a joke. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo, that's another one. Um, I did cover that game on the channel, and unfortunately, uh, it's pretty mediocre, and the story is forgettable. The characters aren't interesting, and it essentially was just a giant waste of time. And then there's that uh, that Borderlands spinoff, uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is a fucking dumbass name for a video game. I'm not a Borderlands fan. I have all three of the games on Steam, but I'm just not really a fan of those types of games. I've played them. I've had some time with them, but they're not really worth talking about in my opinion. So that was March. Then we have April. So the biggest game that came out in April was Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which I did play. I thought it was a decent game. The older Lego games, not just the older Lego Star Wars games, but the older Lego games in general were much better. The problem with the Skywalker Saga is that the mission structure was too straightforward, uh, the level design was extremely uninspired, and there was just way too much content. And most of the content that was there was just a big collectathon, just like the other Lego games. They haven't really changed much at all over the last decade plus, so... Yeah, that's why I haven't really covered that game at all. Then we have uh, MLB The Show 22. Um, again, I don't talk about sports games. This is another game. The other game alongside uh, Gran Turismo 7 that, um, that I was forced to buy with my PS5 bundle. But I didn't play MLB The Show 22. I didn't even open the plastic on the, on the case. I actually traded it in for the remake of Demon Souls. And I'm not sure why I did that. But that's the only other... A uh, PS5 game that many have said is worth playing, and uh, the Demon Souls game, both the original and the remake, are both pieces of shit. Not sure why I did that. I probably would have enjoyed uh, MLB The Show 22 at least marginally better than a shit remake from a shit video game that's over a decade plus uh, old at this point. And yeah, the rest of this is just a joke. This is where the drought really began, and it's pretty much been that way ever since because in may we have a similar list as far as you know how many games were actually released and uh just about all of these are a fucking joke uh the evil dead video game which doesn't remotely resemble the, anything regarding the evil dead movies ironically uh was the biggest game that came out in may and uh if you're not a multiplayer person then there was no reason for you to be invested uh, with said Evil Dead game. Then we had also uh, Salt and Sacrifice, which is the sequel to Salt and Sanctuary. I believe I have Salt and Sanctuary on Steam, I just haven't played it. Uh, but apparently it's like a, a 2D indie Dark Souls type of thing, Souls-like game. So I'm not sure if I would enjoy something like that. But yeah, pretty much all of this is just, like I said, uh, bullshit. Then in June, there was an even longer list of games that uh, was released during that month. But similar to some of the previous months of the year, most of these were not worth uh, anyone's time. The biggest game that came out that month is The Quarry, which I actually just recently got for free on Steam. So I'm actually uh, looking forward to um, going through that. I do enjoy those narrative drama games like uh, Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls, Until Dawn, games like that. I do enjoy games like that, so I'm looking forward to going through that. But uh, yeah, outside of that, everything else was pretty much a shit show, which is sad for a list that's this extensive. And then most recently, uh, the month of July. Apparently this, uh, this game Stray, and I really don't know shit about this game, but a lot of people have said it's like a sleeper hit and it's one of the best games that's been released this year. I'm sure those same people think that Elden Ring is one of the best games ever made. So that's not really saying much. It's some game about a, a cat or something. I don't fucking know. It sounds fucking stupid. It looks stupid to me. I'm not really going to say anything about it. 
And then we had uh, Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3, but if you don't have a Nintendo Switch, then, you know, it is what it is. And so now, um, I've caught up to where we are right now in August. We are in early August. And right now it's looking like another month that's filled with a bunch of drought. Uh, we have another Souls-like, uninspired Souls-like with uh, Themesia, which I played the demo for that piece of shit. And it is indeed a piece of shit. And I will not be covering that game at all in any way, shape, or form on this channel. Uh, we have Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. I may make a small video talking about the PC version specifically of that game, but I've already, you know, rebought that game on PC. Fantastic game. Very much looking forward to web-slinging through New York City on my GE76 Raider. And then, if I go down the list here, uh, there's the reboot to Saints Row, which is probably the biggest game that's coming out this month. Uh, but the reboot looks very, I don't like using this word, but it looks very woke. It looks very politically correct, you know, very PC. And it just looks cringy, you know, cringeworthy and try hard. I don't know if I'm going to play Saints Row right now. I'm going to say I'm not going to play it. So for anyone who's looking forward to that game, don't expect me to, to cover this game on, on the channel. Not to mention, the PC version is not being released to Steam. Uh, Epic Games, once again, has paid for exclusivity on the Epic Games Store for Saints Row. So, uh, that's more reason enough alone for me to not invest in it. We have uh, Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed, which is a uh, basically a remake of the original Destroy All Humans 2. I'll probably end up getting it just out of necessity, but... I didn't really care for the first game, primarily because despite the fact that it was, you know, graphically updated, the gameplay itself was still stuck like two, three, actually three generations in the past, so I don't expect the sequel to be really any different in that regard. That's where we are right now, and then the slate for the rest of the year is looking fucking pretty, pretty grim. Dude, it's, it's looking like an empty fucking void is the best that I can put it. If you look at the releases for September, it's just like a bunch of bullshit, dude. Like, what is some of this stuff? I've never even heard of some of these fucking games like uh, Metal uh, Hellslinger. Then we have Splatoon 3. Like, really? There's Lord of the Rings Gollum. Like, who the fuck asked for a fucking... Uh, Lord of the Rings game where you play as Gollum and Gollum's the only playable fucking character like it's like who fucking thought that was a good idea who they need to be fucking fired dude like for real we have uh, The Last of Us uh, 1 or part 1 which is a remake of The Last of Us 1 uh, which is coming out on PS5 and PC but the PC version probably won't release until probably early next year so for now, the game is just going to be released on PS5 come September the 2nd. But Sony is literally charging $70 for this game. A game that is old as shit that's now being released for, you know, re-released for the second time. And doesn't have any new content that the original didn't already have. Aside from some new accessibility options. Nothing new as far as uh, gameplay updates or any new levels or anything of that nature, no new characters, nothing. So, yeah, that's pretty much a waste of $70 if you ask me. Then we have October, and uh, this list has not been updated, so I'm going to switch over to Wikipedia, which is updated. So, in October, the month is already not off to a good start, because within the first 10 days, the only game uh, that's really catching any attention or that's going to catch any attention really is uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns, which that game looks like a piece of shit, and I have no plans on covering this game whatsoever on the channel. For the next 10 days after that, we have uh, Dragon Ball The Breakers. That game looks like a piece of shit. I'm not even like lying. You should look at the fucking trailer for that. That game looks fucking embarrassing. They need to just bury the fucking Dragon Ball IP. It, it's fucking played out. 
you know, at this point, and this is coming from a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, this is coming from someone who grew up with the fucking show, who has pretty much everything Dragon Ball Z related on Blu-ray, including some of the more recent movies, but even, even the newest one that's coming out, like Dragon Ball, uh, it's called Dragon Ball Super Superhero, shit sounds stupid, it looks fucking stupid, um, the animation looks like, it, it just looks whack. This game looks like it's going to be whack. It's, it's bullshit. Just stop making games off of this fucking IP at this point, dude. Just stop. Everything that's been done with Dragon Ball has been done already. If they want to make a Tenkaichi 4, great. But we already know that's not going to happen, so they need to fucking chill out with these games, right? Uh, we have Plague Tale, uh, a Plague Tale Requiem. I haven't played the, uh, the first one, which is uh, a Plague Tale Innocence, but I do have the game. I just haven't played it, so maybe I'll uh, go through it before Requiem comes out, but uh, no promises there. And then we have the final 10 days, and this is where it starts to get a little interesting. This is kind of where the drought starts to um, level out. So on the 21st of October, uh, Persona 5 Royal finally makes its way to PC. Uh, this game will be released on Steam, and I will be picking it up day one because Persona 5 Royal was my favorite game from the 8th console generation, and it was the best the best RPG that was released during the entirety of the 8th generation. And um, I'm looking forward to playing it on my GE76 Raider. Then we have uh, Scorn, which is uh, a game, a first-person shooter, uh, biopunk game, a survival horror game. Uh, that was inspired by um, H.R. Geiger, who worked on the um, the original designs for the Alien series uh, by Ridley Scott, director R Ridley Scott. So I'm looking forward to playing that. It's actually available for discount now. It's only available for PC and Xbox, uh, the Xbox series uh, systems. I've already paid for the game, so it's just a matter of waiting for the release date. Um, and then we have uh, Gotham Knights uh, the next week after that. Gotham Knights doesn't look that great, but it doesn't look terrible. It looks pretty uh, middle of the road. It looks like they played it safe. And then the risk that they took by removing Batman from a game that's set in Gotham City, you know, that has these, uh, that has the Bat family in it as the, uh, the main playable protagonist. Yeah, I don't know. It might work, it might not work, I just gotta play the game myself and see how it goes. Then we have Star Ocean The Divine Force, um, which is another Square Enix published game, and it's being developed by uh, Tri-Ace, and this is coming out on all platforms come October the 27th. I've seen the trailer for this game, and it looks god-awful. And the last Star Ocean game, which came out many, many years ago, was also a piece of shit from what I heard. And I, I'm not really too familiar with the uh, Star Ocean series. I am well aware that the games are JRPGs, but it is not a franchise that's on the same level as Persona or Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts or anything of that nature. And uh, the character designs alone and the art style alone have basically killed any interest, uh, any of my personal interest in this game. So I will not be covering the Divine Force. Then we have uh, Bayonetta 3. A lot of people are looking forward to this. I don't have a Nintendo Switch, so I won't be playing it. But for those who do have a Nintendo Switch, I hope you enjoy the experience. I can't really say that I like Bayonetta. Uh, the first game I actually really don't like at all. Um, it's way too many weird elements. Too much of a carbon clone of uh, Devil May Cry, and not really in a good way. And, uh, yeah, uh, apparently the sequels were much better than the in that initial game, but uh, they've only been available on Nintendo systems, on Nintendo uh, gaming consoles, and uh, I'm not a Nintendo person, so I just haven't played them. And, of course, we have our yearly Call of Duty. Resident Evil Reverse is coming out, and that game looked like a piece of shit from the get-go, which is why... I'm sure uh, Capcom delayed it, because it, it initially was supposed to be released. It was bundled with Resident Evil Village, and they were going to let fans play the game for free. But after the backlash of, you know, comments on the trailer and whatnot, the initial debut trailer for Reverse, 
Capcom delayed the game indefinitely, but it's finally coming out in October, and I'm pretty certain it's going to be terrible. Also, um, the DLC for Resident Evil Village is coming out in late October as well. Um, you can buy the DLC right now for $20. It is not free after all. You do have to pay for it. But the content itself looks like it's pretty good, so um, I'm looking forward to um, covering that on the channel. That's the plan, anyway. And then the rest of the month is pretty much nonsense. So, scrolling down to November. Doesn't look like there's really anything uh, worth talking about or discussing in November at this point in time. So, scrolling down even further, in December we have... The Callisto Protocol. I am very much looking forward to this game. And uh, I don't really suspect it's going to be any better than Dead Space, but I expect that it's going to be at least on the same level as Dead Space. Especially considering that the game director, uh, Glenn Schofield, is the guy, you know, the same guy who created Dead Space. So, and even more ironic, this is coming out one month before the actual. Uh, Dead Space 1 remake in 2023 next year. Very interested to see how this game compares. Both, well, both games compare uh, the Callisto Protocol and the remake to Dead Space. Also, there is one other game that's been slated for release this year, and that, that game is Hogwarts Legacy, which is being developed by Avalanche and published by Warner Brothers. WB Games. This is actually my most anticipated game this year. That reveal uh, that they had a few months ago with the um, uh, that PlayStation Experience event that they had for Hogwarts Legacy, that was phenomenal. Um, the game looks fucking amazing. It really does look like the game developers did their homework and they tried to craft a game that allows people to be a part of the Harry Potter universe in a way that's, you know, that hasn't been done before. So definitely looking forward to this game, and I will be covering uh, Hogwarts Legacy on the channel via the PC version, when it inevitably does release later this year. Looking forward to it. But yeah, uh, 2022 has been fucking awful. Uh, there's only four games that I plan on covering for the rest of the duration of the year. That's uh, Hogwarts Legacy, Gotham Knights, and both of those are from the same publisher, which is WB Games. Scorn and the Callisto Protocol. If you want to count Spider-Man on PC, and uh, later this year Spider-Man Miles Morales is apparently coming to PC as well. If you want to count those games, you can, but I wouldn't because I've already covered those games on the channel in the past. You know, any videos that I potentially make about you know, a game that I've rebought on PC, like Persona 5 Royal or Spider-Man, for example. I'm just going to make the video talking about the actual port itself, not the game. Only four more games left uh, that I plan on covering for 2022. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty bad, man. Uh, this is one of the worst years uh, in gaming in recent memory. We were supposed to have other games such as uh, Stalker 2, which was also supposed to come out this year, but because of the Ukraine situation, that was pushed back to uh, 2023. There's quite a few games that is usually delayed to uh, the following year, and this has been a mainstay issue with the video game industry over the last several years. So it is what it is. Should be used to it at this point, but... Yeah, man, when compared to the um, the film and the television industries, uh, the video game industry has been a fucking complete joke this year. In fact, the best game that I've played all year is Horizon Forbidden West, and again, I wouldn't even say that game's great. It's, you know, a pretty good sequel, it's a proper sequel, but it's not, it's not any better than the first game. I think the first game is actually better than Forbidden West. So there you have it, 2022 in video games. A uh, goddamn joke.